you so much for tuning in to Shanae's Law. This is a part of my Bunny Neck, the new series here that I have on YouTube. So make sure that you have looked at all of those previous playlists about my foot surgery thus far so you can be well abreast of what's going on with me present day. So as you know, September 9th actually made six months since my last the six month anniversary, if you will, of my foot surgery. I had it on March 9th, RIP to Biggie. I had a bayonectomy, a tennis bayonectomy, and a hammer toe correction. And it has been a journey. It's nothing like people really say. And it was quite an experience. It was a journey. It really didn't go the way it's planned. You know, ideally, they say six to eight weeks, you'll be down. You'll be in a knee scooter. You'll be in recovery. Not so much for me. It ended up being 30. <laughs> like what 90 days three months it was quite horrendous but you know I stayed positive and I stayed focused so let's just get into it so again it wasn't that was really no preparation I watched all the videos I, I read all the forums I did all the research I was mad prepared I had the grocery list done I had the alterations done to my house I had my bathroom prepared I had a Ramp made in my kitchen out of cardboard so I could roll over the wood when it rolls into the kitchen tile. I did whatever it took and it still, it was, I, I got through it. I got through it. But nobody on YouTube or anywhere I could find had had a similar experience quite like mine. It was very much my own unique experience. You understand? So, you know, most people just had like the bunion after me and that was it. Not so much for me. I had a three part reconstructive surgery on the forefront of my foot and it was really it was hell <laughs> anyway so i just want to get out here and tell you guys a little bit about what's going on at six months you know, a lot of you personally know me are going to watch this because you were interested in what's going on with me how am i doing where have i been am i coming back to work Anywho, others are here because they want to know what to expect, what to experience. So my surgery was pretty extensive. It was pretty hardcore. It wasn't just a standard bunionectomy. They did both sides of my foot, including the toes. I had pins in my three toes and I also had a pin in my pinky. So let's get into it. My scars. I've been using my prescription creams that my doctor prescribed ever since about, I want to say, the middle of May. So from May into September, I've been using those creams as prescribed. I use one for inflammation and I use the other one for more so the cosmetic corrective healing and smoothing it out. I've been massaging those areas every single day, twice a day if I can, because I want them to continue to be flat. The left side of the foot is the tops of the scars. There's still a little bit of a high rise, but the scars on the toes and the scars on the right side of the foot, you know, the side that took forever to heal, are very flat and they look good and they're turning light brown like the rest of me so I think I'm on track with that and I've also been using my, a lot of cocoa butters Vaseline intensive care cocoa butter lotion along with Queen Helen Palmer's cocoa butter I just been sticking to the cocoa butters like I'm supposed to and the foot is looking really good I know my doctor said you scar really well but I mean whatever I know what I'm doing I mean he can prescribe what he want but I'm sticking to my cocoa butter because it knows best. Okay, so this is my foot right now. And I just put my scar cream on. As you can kind of see it right here along the scars. And of course it's along the toes and both sides of the foot because as I told you, I had a bunionectomy, a hammer toe correction, and a tailor's bunionectomy. And it looks so much better than what it did before. Look at that. Nice and straight. But the scars look really, really good as opposed to some I've already seen. The doctor said I scar really, really well. So that's always a plus. And it's only been yesterday made a two two months official that the surgery was done. So imagine how good that's gonna look in a few months. And I still have two pins about right here. They're in the shape of an X. And I have just one pin over here that fixed my tailor spine. And unfortunately, I did have some slow healing along the tailor bionectomy side. So I am still non-weight bearing on this right foot. And it's driving me crazy, but it is what it is. So I'm still on my little knee scooter here. 
this thing is a godsend crutches i just couldn't do it so here we are but the crutches are here posted nice and lovely of course i'm not using them but yeah nice and posted so uh i do have a machine too my last visit was a week ago a week ago today and he gave me a bone healing system which is like an ultrasound and i'll show you that you show you guys that later on and of course these are my creams that i was given by my doctor this one i keep them in this nice little baggie just for convenience so i can grab them and take care of my foot throughout the day this one right here is for um, anytime i have any type of irritation to keep it from being anti-inflammatory things of that sort and i've also noticed with the weather progressing and getting warmer because it's now may 10th sometimes the scar you know the incision area gets a little irritated gets a little warm so i definitely keep that one on at least twice a day i like to put it on the morning and night and this one is my scar cream that's what's on there right now as you can see here this guy right here and he says this is actually better than Moderma, so we'll see how that works and last but not least is a new product from gold bond and i've been using this i was going to use it just for regular self-care but i had it around and i figured you know my foot was so dry mind you you know i was in that soft cast then i was in a hard cast and then you know my leg was so ashy as i was taking care of that he wrapped up the foot because i had those three pins sticking out of those three middle toes but this has been really good so i always put this on too in the morning sometimes at night but i mostly put my palmer's cocoa butter on i slather this stuff on right here i just slather it on the back of the foot and and in between the toes too and that's what really brought my foot back to life aloe vera gel this good stuff right here and of course my gold bun and my prescribed creams so stretches moving along I'm still doing my stretches. I'm still moving my big toe back and forth like it's supposed to because you don't want it to be immobile. If it starts getting stuck and not moving, that could cause you a plethora of problems later on down the road and you do not want that. You want that toe moving back and forth. You want it on point. You want to be able to do everything that you ever did before and you don't want any more problems. You've been through enough at this point, damn it. You don't want any more problems. You don't. So move that toe. Go to physical therapy if it's recommended. If you can't afford it, definitely do it up. Do it on your own at home. Find you some YouTube videos and keep that foot moving. But you gotta move. You gotta put in the work. Nobody's gonna do it for you. And this is your foot. And if you're like me, you're getting your second foot done soon. So you're taking everything by the book so you can have be on the road to a positive, healthy recovery with no more issues. So you also want to keep the arches on point i know that if you were anything like me i was immobile on my right leg no weight for <laughs> like 90 days three months so they do tell you to rub your foot over a tennis ball or a baseball something like that what i actually use is two glade air freshener cans okay my mom gave me that idea and it actually really works really well i have two because remember i have a bad bout of plantar fasciitis as well as having all these other foot problems that i got so it's you know it's been a journey you gotta take care of yourself but i take the cans and i just roll the arches of my foot over the can and it is just the most amazing thing in the world and it's 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 very inexpensive like why wouldn't you i suggest everybody do it you gotta take care of your feet calf raises i've been doing calf raises I try to get in a good 80, sometimes 100, and if I, I think about it, I'll just do them because you're going to lose a lot of muscle depending on how long you are down and immobile on that on that leg. Like for me, again, three months. So the, my right leg is still strengthening. It's still getting the muscle back, and I'm working on it. But I've been working out. I'm back to doing high interval. I'm taking it slow, but I did get cleared back at the end of July near my last appointment to do the squats, the lunges. I'm a Zumba queen. I'm back to doing my Zumba. I started out doing 30 minutes every day. Then I started doing an hour. Now I'm doing an hour a day to get my surgery weight down and to get back toned up. I'm also back to lifting my weights, getting it back right, toning. I had a lot of muscle, attract, muscle atrophy in my right leg 
due to being on any scooter for 90 days. It was rough. The first thing to go is that muscle. So it's been a journey. Now that I'm back to doing my squats, my lunges, my calf raises, I know that I'm going to get back to where I want to be and back to where I was. That's really important. So I'm also icing. I'm icing when necessary. It does still get swollen. I know it's going to be swollen for probably another six months because they tell you after after the surgery, it's going to swell for at least a year. And I am at the six month point. So I only have about six more months to go, of course. And I'm elevating when necessary. If I've been on my feet too much all day, especially a little bit before bed, I'm going ahead and propping it up and icing it simultaneously if necessary. Get them both over with, get them knocked out the way. I'm running. I'm running again. I'm excited about that. You know, because I remember he, it was one point, you know, when I was in the boot, he was like, no walk. He was like, you can walk, but, you know, no jumping, no high interval training, no running from the police. You got to take it, you know, slow. We can't have you out here being crazy and outlandish. Just take it slow. Just take it easy. And I did just that. I was very careful. I didn't go to uh, places where I felt like I was going to be unsafe. I didn't go places where I thought I was going to be accosted or have to run or a shootout was going to break out. I was very careful. And I still have my handicap parking decal in my car. I have that for the next six months too, so I don't have to walk far. That's, you know, keeping a lot of stress and pressure off of me. That's really important. So I definitely say my overall healing. Once the bone on the right side of the foot, my fifth metatarsal, my my fifth metatarsal, once the fifth metatarsal finally got healed, things got better. So I definitely, definitely recommend my estrogen bone healing system. That was a godsend for me. So that was the fourth video in the series. If you haven't seen that, make sure that you watch that. I actually got that May 2nd and it helped me speed up my recovery process because I was walking within about four weeks. Started walking May 30th in my boot and I was in a boot for about five to six weeks before I could walk in regular shoes full time. So I definitely recommend getting that. That was absolutely a godsend. I remember, you know, as soon as I started walking, I cleaned my bathroom, I cleaned my house. I was just trying to get back to my normal routine prior to being on bed rest and being numb, weight bearing on my right side of my uh, body. It was crazy, but I got through it. I got through it. I'm healing up really well. My scars are healing well. They look good. They're, they don't get irritated with socks and things like that. I found some really great shoes, you know, that I can wear at work that are business casual. My doctor recommended Echo. So, ladies, if you got to wear business casual shoes, Echo, are, uh, they're a really good brand. They have really great, strong arch support. So, I recommend that. And I also have some from, I think their name is Clark's. I'll put them down in the description below. So one's Echo and that's Clark's. Really good. Very strong art support. And I got those off of Amazon. So you can look cute and be healing simultaneously. I definitely stuck my game up with my supplements. I got zinc, calcium, and magnesium once I found out that was some delayed bone healing. And I took those two months and I still take them because, again, I'm still getting that left foot done. I'm still getting it done. I don't care how horrific this first one was with the hill and I'm getting this left one done too, okay? I can't be out in these streets with some feet acting up. Uh-uh, uh-uh. If I live to be about 80, I'm going to need these feet for another 55 years. So I got to get it. Yeah, I got to get it together while I'm young and I can bounce back. I can't be out here suffering. No, we, we, we're getting it done. Clean, healthy diet i'm still eating my greens i'm still watching my sugar my starch and my flour intake because don't forget if it's not the sugar it's the sodium i'm watching all of that i'm drinking large amounts of water on a daily basis i've been looking more into an alkaline healthy diet especially since this experience taking care of myself and i maintain an overall positive mindset you know i'm really happy that i Stay so calm. I'm not going to lie. You know, the first six to eight weeks, your mind is already set on. Oh, I got it. It's just six to eight weeks. You know, for the months of preparation. Mind you, this was a process. This was going to the podiatrist, getting the x-rays, trying this, waiting in the orthotics, getting the orthotics, trying the different. Because, you know, you go through a plethora of steps prior to just getting the surgery. Surgery is the last resort. But I kind of already knew. I was past that. 
Around this time last year in 2017, I knew things was going wrong. My degrees are in business. They are not in feet. And I knew I had to go see an expert. So that's what I did. And I'm so glad that I did. Looking back a year later from realizing I had problems to going to Dr. Uh, Dr. B's office and meeting him, this journey, it was worth it. It was not, it was not a fairy tale. It wasn't some of those easier bunny neck things you hear about on YouTube. It was not that. It was my own unique up and down journey. Even though my body was down, my mind was lifted. I stayed positive. I put words of affirmation all around my house. I, I worked on my vision board, my vision journal. I kept focused. I kept positive. And I'm still wearing my orthotics. I'm still wearing my orthotics. I suggest everybody get orthotics. I know they're a bit pricey, but if you have insurance and if you can afford it, I know they're about $500, but it's so worth it. We are humans walking on man-made surfaces. So especially if you're working in, you're working in some warehouse on some concrete, you might really want to consider getting you some orthotics. I'm still wearing mine. And my no more plantar fasciitis symptoms. I know we spoke on this. My, I had very, very, very bad plantar fasciitis. I have had no more symptoms. I'm still doing my exercises though. I'm still doing the stretches. You know, they give you that little pamphlet and they got like a little person pressing against the wall and all of that. Yeah, I'm still doing all that. I'm still doing the toe crunches with the towel. I'm still, I got the Glade cans rolling up my, the bottoms of my soles over the Glade cans. I'm, I'm making it work. I'm still doing that. And I'm still wearing sneakers too, by the way. I wore New Balance sneakers and Hoka ones. Those are really great. And you can put your orthotic insole in those as well. So I recommend those. <laughs> business casual you got your echo you got your clarks i'm still wearing my sneakers you know as prescribed it's comfortable but i can't wear a house slipper i'm wearing house slippers at night around the house which is a big step up for me because i couldn't wear those at first it hurt so bad that planner for shyness had me thinking i was i was gonna die like it was bad i was wondering was feet even have worth it i was like damn kunta can't say you didn't have these problems they chopped off one of them but it was bad it was bad, but overall, I don't regret it. So if you are in this part of your journey, just keep up the good work. Don't give up. It gets better. Every day it gets better. And then you'll learn along the way. Your body is going to tell you what to do, what not to do, what's good, what's not good. Go to your appointments. Be honest with your podiatrist. I had a really good podiatrist, and he will be doing my left foot. He's going to do some alterations this time. He's going to put the pin on the left foot differently in the area that he did on the right because that little side i think the positioning actually slowed down my healing so we're definitely going to try something different with the left foot hopefully i won't have to have three pins in that foot but you never know we'll just see how it goes but i'll definitely vlog when i go and get that done the process the, the appointments which there'll be plenty because you know you have to go to your primary hair care physician to get approval or the facility that your doctor is going to do the surgery at. You got to go do tests and take 97 pregnancy tests like I did. I don't know why everybody wanted me to be, me be a baby mama, but everybody wanted me to be a baby mama. Everybody wanted me to be a baby mama. I had pregnancy tests so many. I don't see how you can get pregnant the next day, but apparently they thought I could. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, well, that's where I am. That's where I've been for those of you of you that know me personally, those of you who are about to have this surgery done or already had it done, just do it. Prepare, research your doctor, don't be afraid. Preparation is key, nutrition is key. Stay positive and stay busy. And with that being said, I hope this can be a really great reference in your research on this journey. It's gonna be okay. I'm here, I made it. I'm gonna get the second foot done regardless of all of the couple of, I didn't have complications. I had the like bone healing. But you know what I mean. Despite all of that, I'm still getting the left one done. So it's going to be all right. Stay prepared. Stay focused. Stay healthy. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anybody who you who may be having a foot surgery. Even if they're just getting their plan for shy, it's taken care of. Let them know that this video is a resource to them. Send it to them. Let me know what happened to you. If you had a bunny neck to me or if you're preparing, if you have any questions, I don't mind answering them. So if you got questions about... Anything that I did hit on in this whole series, go down in the comment section below. 
uh, ask me what you want to ask me or just tell me how that you help. I did your second. I ain't trying to give y'all too much now. Hold on. Trying to give you too much. Ooh, woo. Anyway. <laughs> tell me what, um, how was your second foot surgery? Was it better than the first? Was it about the same? How did you get well? And uh, we could just go from there. So thanks for watching.